there's too much and we want to keep it a little shorter. So um, Katie is a vocal coach um, and full-time voice teacher. She is a five-time Region 15 quartet champion. She directs the present Region 15 Chorus Championship Chorus, Liberty Oak Chorus, and has done so for 15 years. And to me, after reading all that, sounds like she probably knows just a little bit about singing and barbershop. So I'm thinking we might just learn one thing today, and that would be fabulous. So may I introduce to you, Katie Blackwood. Yay, thank you so much. I just had a great time in my other class, and I was able to move to my dining room table and just to sit and relax because I don't need my piano right now. So this class was developed called Your Brain on Music because all of us are learning music completely differently or some of us not at all right now, right? So it's really changed the, the dynamic and the scope and how we navigate learning our music. Now, most of us who join Sweet Adelines are not 12 years old, do not have this one you know, brain that's really easy to deal with. Most of us who join Sweet Adelines are now a little older. And this, it's very, very difficult learning music as an adult. So I came up with this class because I wanted to share my father, God rest his soul. What, genius, the man was like a Mensa, okay? I mean, really smart guy. Couldn't, his handwriting was terrible, but he could learn his music. He was a good baritone, but he could not learn the, the notes and the words very quickly. And part of that was just his time. Part of that was just his busy schedule, but also part of it was because he definitely did not try to set realistic goals and give himself different types of ways to learn. The first time he started realizing that he could write all the words out to the lyrics and put them on a piece of paper and not on the music, he started learning the, the music better. He started learning the words better because he was doing an extra added little effort there. So he was, the computer was, so he was typing the words on the computer. So it gave him another added, you know, level of education and memorization. And it kind of triggered me uh, to develop this class because I think a lot of us really have changed. I mean, I can't see everybody, but how many of us have always learned our music in the car? I see you, okay? And you're not going in your car anymore, right? So we're not traveling back and forth. We're not, we're not with our buddies, like singing against the different, you know, the different park tracks in the car. We're not, um, we're not, ha we don't have the time. We're not even driving some of us, not even driving to work. So all of that time is usually spent learning our music. However, I feel like, when I talk to my chorus members and they, they're having issues with a piece of music and I'm like, how many times have you just listened to the track and not looked at the piece of paper? Well, that happens a ton of times. So it's the nasty P word. I know it's a terrible word, it's called practice. And the way we practice is a different feeling than what we've ever had before because of the pandemic. So I wanna just give you some very basic goals, some very, very basic tips. And you're gonna say, all right, I already knew this. Okay, we have to put it into practice. And I'm going to be sending some of this information so you don't need to be writing it down. I'd rather you be listening and asking questions. So one of the things we have to do as singers, as directors, as coaches, we have to set realistic goals for learning. My chorus, when a new piece of music goes out, they learn measure one through 23. Then they learn measure 24 to, to the, you know, we don't learn an entire song. Come to rehearsal, know the whole song. We learn it in pieces, okay? As an individual is exactly when you get a piece of music from your, you know, for the, from the chorus and you have to have it ready by X date, you can make your own realistic calendar plan. Okay, so this week I'm gonna work on measures one to 23. And I think that kind of giving ourselves more realistic goals and setting up the time, how much, you how much time are you actually really practicing? 
and getting those goals and setting the goals that you can actually keep focused on. Not trying to say, oh gosh, I got to run this whole song today. I got to run five songs today. And then you can easily track your improvements a little bit more too. I know when somebody says to me, I don't have the time. Well, then what do you want me to say? I know you don't, none of us have time. None of us have time. But if you really want to prioritize and you really want to be singing in your chorus and you want to learn new music and you want to get better on your contest music, that means you got to, Use the dirty P word, okay? That means you gotta practice. And it's the hardest thing to do in a pandemic era, for sure. It's already hard to do anyway. And I think that making them very specific, like I just said, measure one to 23, make them measurable. Meaning, can you tell when you've met the goal? So can you lead, can you sing, a, if you're a baritone, can you sing measure one through 20, three against the lead track into a recorder and it's right. That's a measurable goal. It is easy. It's specific. I'm just going to work on the tag today. Okay. But I'm a bass. So I'm going to sing against the lead part, the baritone part and the tenor part because y'all have tracks. Don't lie to me. Y'all have tracks. So you can sing against those parts, but I would actually record myself here at home, on my phone, on a recording device, go back, look at the music. And even if you don't read music, you can follow the bouncing ball, right? You can see if you're going up and going down. So you're listening and you're watching. Oh, I didn't go up there. That's, you know, then you ask your section leader. They say, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is a problem. You circle it as you're going by. These are very basic things that you're going, oh, duh, Katie, but you're not doing them. And I think it's worth talking about this because as we learn as an adult, we don't have that flexible, pliable, mushy brain that can absorb everything. There's just no way. We have a thousand other things on our mind and the pandemic has really set us in a tailspin. There's no doubt. And so again, smaller goals, measurable goals, and now achievable ones, right? Again, they have to be re realistic. Do you want to work on your contest music talking about your skill level? So what are some of the things that you've had your director spoken to you about or your section leader spoken to you about with connected legato singing, not singing horizontal, singing more horizontal, not vertical. Okay. Maybe not singing so choppy, right? So that's something you can do. Make sure you have a recording of your chorus singing, which I hope you do. And you sing along with it and you hear yourself singing, and the worst thing people don't want to do, they don't want to hear themselves sing. But if you never hear yourself sing, you'll never improve. It will never happen. That's the God's honor truth. And again, and as hard as it is, I really don't want to listen to myself sing. How are you going to improve as an independent singer, as a chorus member, to be able to get into the ensemble, sing in sync, sing in tune, right? All of those things but never trying to do everything at once because quite frankly, that's even overwhelming to somebody who's a musician. You know, it's a lot, really a lot, okay? And again, these are, I'm talking to people, even if you are not a person that can read music, you can sing along with your track. You can sing along with your track and you can also sing along with your part track. Here's another trick. Sing along with your part track and record yourself and see if you're singing the same notes as your part track, right? Uh -huh. So there's that too. We, that's why we've given all these tools to Sweet Adelines over the years. That's why we have musicians out in front of choruses now so that the level of singing is getting higher and higher and higher. And I just feel like making your practice goals along, align with your overall goals in learning your music in being really good at your contest music and all your music. See, that's my philosophy. It's not just two songs you gotta be good at, you gotta be good at everything. All the music we sing has to be top notch, right? And I think that when we have those kinds of, again, realistic, measurable, achievable, relevant goals, then it's all about your time. Okay, well, Katie, I'm on Zoom all day. 
I have to walk the dog, feed the kids. I've got to help my husband with this, that, and that. My partner with this, this, and that. I have to um, take the dog for a walk. I have to go to the doctor, dentist. I've heard it all. Okay. However, you take the time to go to rehearsal. So, and you somehow figure out your music and get ready for rehearsal. So whenever that time frame is, it's not just in your car. But if it is just in your car, well, then I'd start to rethink about, I want to handle that too. But if you're taking that time, especially during the pandemic, we need to probably set, again, it doesn't have to be a half hour, an hour. It can be 15 minutes. Songs are two minutes long. So today I'm going to work on my two contests, the contest up tune and the contest ballad. That's all I'm going to do today. That's four minutes, five minutes at the most. So what I'm going to do is, again, line up. What do I want to work on? Not just singing through it. I mean, you can do that. But maybe today I'm going to sing through it and do the choreography so that you're building stamina, right? A little bit at a time. These are so many things that I'm sure that sounds so simplified, but I can guarantee you I would met all my money on, that I have that people aren't doing this. And that, again, they're trying to achieve something bigger all the time and not something smaller. And I, I think also, like I said, being consistent with your practicing, there he goes, that's that word again. Um, it, again, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. Katie, I don't have an hour to learn a song. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Songs are two minutes long, like I just said, and just kind of put those things in priority prioritize and work on just those pieces. I think that's so important. Our brains cannot handle more than that, especially during this time. We're overwhelmed by all of this. We all know it, may as well say it out loud. And I think that that also kind of now clouds the ability to learn. I don't know about you guys, but I watched a lot of Netflix in between mm -hmm. teaching, um, you know, because I, I live alone, my family's far away, and I couldn't go see them. So, you know, it take, you know, we have a lot of time to spare that we didn't use wisely. <laughs> um, I did get there's some really great shows though, by the way, that I never get to see because I'm usually out coaching and teaching. So I think the other thing too, like I said earlier, is practicing in segments. That's really another great thing. I, I my course likes working that way because. Even though a lot of them, my little AAA friends in my chorus, they, um, they learn the whole song. But what happens is for those people who can't too much, too hard, it's just a really great thing for them to only have to worry about the first 23 measures. And then when they come, they feel really accomplished about it as opposed to feeling overwhelmed about it. And if there's any directors on here, I really hope you take this advice because I think it's a very smart way to work because we want our singers to be right with notes and words. We don't have to want to have to go back because we just skipped over all of that. We didn't work on pieces. And I think that's essential. Again, recording yourself is another thing too. I know we hate to do that, but you can, even if you're not a musician, like you're not a person that can actually hear the right notes and words, then I would say, that's a great idea. I see that they start at the end of the song. I've done that a thousand times too, because you know what, you do stay in pitch that way. <laughs> this is where you got to end, right? This is the, these are the notes we end on. Um, but I think that is recording yourself and listening back to either your part track, listening to your, your singing against the lead part or some other part is important too, so that you can go back and make notes and if you don't know what those notes are, then you can ask your section leader. You can say, I worked on this today and I, I am not getting these measures. I don't know what I'm doing. Can you please help? You know, so we can still work. We can still be educated. We can still do something during this time. And quite frankly, when I went back to in-person rehearsals, I was shocked at the level of singing and the level of commitment and dedication that these women had during Zoom and the educational things that we did, vocally, 
visually, all of those things that led them to already a very high level that I was afraid was not going to be the case. I was thrilled, right? So I think that we want to really think about how we can create some time for ourselves because we don't have the car, because we don't necessarily get to see everybody, our partners in crime that we get to ride with and sing along with, all of those kinds of things is to just try again, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have, one song, two songs, that kind of thing. But the number, the other P word besides practice is being patient. Is to be patient. Be patient with yourselves. It's a tough time. And if I don't get measures one through 23 today, I'm gonna to get them tomorrow. You know, I just think that that's, I just think that's so important um, that we really try to just take a deep breath. Somebody just said this to me yesterday, just yesterday. Calm first, clarity second. And I think we get frustrated with our music because we are adults. We have all this other stuff going on. Um, we have many, many hands in many different places. Our brain is going in 5 million different directions. And music should be the best thing you do. It should be the best part of your day, even when practicing, even when practicing. Practicing, because when you sing, it lights up your, your whole brain, just so you know, there's actually a whole book and there's actually a documentary uh, on your brain on music, which is the whole brain lights up when you sing, not just pieces of it, your entire brain. When you play instruments, when you sing, okay? Because that means it's taking everything, all that dopamine, all that great energy and giving you positive, positive energy to work with. So maybe even during the pandemic, even if you just sang again, like those 10 minutes or whatever, that maybe that would make you feel a little better. And I have, somebody gave me um, a little, you know, like one of those wood plaques and it says, you know, some, some days there won't be a song on your heart, sing anyway. <laughs> and I think that that's important too, because that's also part of the giving us the energy and the courage and the dedication and commitment to want to practice. But I really feel like I said, setting realistic goals is so important, so crucial. Um, and again, don't try to be overwhelmed. I've got, I've got five songs to learn for Christmas that she wants me to do. Don't yell at us, <laughs> love us because we just want you to be better. And so you are the one that has to learn how to set it up at home. And for our brains, again, as adults, it's just going to take more time. Do what my dad did. Typed out the words. Sang along with the music tracks. We, he didn't have tracks back then. We have that. We are able to do that. Call your section leader. Sing along with them on the phone. Zoom. You can sit at home with your recording, singing against the lead. I'm a baritone. I'm a baritone. Singing against the lead. And your section leader is right there in front of you. Tell them to listen. They can hear that. They can mark, mark music and tell you what you need to work on. We did that all the whole time. We did section rehearsals and everybody had to sing in their section. So it's important that we, we try to, again, like I said, small realistic goals and don't overwhelm. Does that everybody have, make sense to everybody? Just give me a little thumbs up. Yes, no. Okay, good. Now I see a lot of chatting going on. So who's responsible for that? No, there's not a lot of chatting going on. There's just one from this time. All the other ones are from the other time. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it just says, and, and that was just a comment about what you had said that her course um, started learning the end of the song every now and then so that they'd be in the right key to recognize the key, but. Yeah, absolutely. And that is true. What, and that's true. What, uh, what uh, Karen said was because you were singing with your tracks, which are always in tune. When we came back, things were in songs were in tune that we never thought would be. We're like, we've never hit that, you know? So if there's definitely a positive 
way to look at all of this. Um, and trust me, ladies, I've had my days too. It's not like I'm like, you know, Polly Peppy, you know, I really, you know, I, it's tough, but I feel like if we don't look at things, if we don't shift, like I did with the masks, if we don't shift our focus and shift ourselves in that positive direction, then it's going to just get worse. And I think that, um, one little thing at a time is all you need to do. So I just need to know if there's any questions about anything that I've talked about here or if anybody wants to share, then we can do that. We can share a little bit about this. Quiet. Quiet. Very quiet. So is there anything that I said? Okay, one, um, can you give info on the documentary? Yeah, it's called Your Brain on Music. That's all I've got right now. But if you look that up, it should come right up. And there's also a book to read. I'm, I'm really big on books. I've got thousands of them about music and performing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also think here's a good time to learn, like to work with your performance at home, uh, you know, in a mirror and singing along and dancing along and using the mirror, right? We have that book that we are there. Okay. Okay, so she's saying we somebody has a book. Remember, they, have, they have the book and they're passing it around. Members are missing the in, whoops, are missing the in-person experience, therefore losing motivation to practice some emotional detachment. Any ideas to overcome that? Well, I, that's what I was just saying. So that's up to the individual, right? I think that if we have members who are, what my course has done, we've just been reaching out. We don't, we didn't take attendance. We didn't expect people. We know that everybody's lives had changed so much. And so what we've been doing is uh, we have been reaching out to people, talking to people. And if somebody actually says to me, I just can't be on Zoom, what am I going to say? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to say, then don't be on Zoom. But here's what we're doing, by the way, because otherwise you're going to fall way behind. Um, my chorus did a, a video project, just like a virtual video project, just like anybody else did. Um, and that seemed to be get, get people kind of motivated and got them excited. We did all kinds of classes, again, because that's what I do. So, and I also invited other people in to do classes. And we really just tried to keep the format of our Zoom, you know, at a regular pace. Warm-ups, sections, new music, repertoire, whatever. Um, and I think that sometimes just having a conversation with your friend and saying, how can I help get you be, to be more mo motivated and dedicated, it's very easy to just want to drift away from all of it. But then I think about what are you missing? And I thought a lot about my mom, uh, who is now a retired Sweet Adeline, but 50 years. She sang for Rini Craig in Ramapo Valley has three gold medals. And she retired down in Delaware. And there's very little, there's very few choruses in that area. So she decided to leave Sweet Adeline. She's 85. She said, it's one of the worst things that ever happened was that she could not find a course to be in. And when you, when it's been such a big part of your life, so if you're a new member, I'm giving you advice. If you're an older member, I'm giving you advice. And that is stick with it because it's a support system that I grew up with that I never thought I would be so much a part of that I am now. I mean, I thought I was gonna be in the theater and I wasn't gonna be doing any of this but it's become such a huge, huge part of my life. And I think that um, when we look at it as a, a tool for support and we look at it as a place to, uh, for positivity and guidance and fun and singing, no matter how we have to do it, I really feel like it's important to keep it in your life. I, I really just, anything you can do to stay connected, uh, whether it's a small group, whether it's cocktails. I know I have a dinner group that meets online or a dinner group they meet like they normally do before rehearsal and they invite everybody who wants to come. So before, and before they actually start our rehearsal. And so, and we have a lot of new members. So we've been really trying to reach out to them doing little pods with them online and whatnot. So- 
more questions, Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, to maximize the way memory works, is it beneficial to practice once just before going to bed? Absolutely. Here's okay. why. So here's here's a little another little trick. So I'm in the musical theater, so I had to learn a script plus the music, right? So they used to joke about in drama and theater classes that you put the script underneath your pillow. Everyone, somebody's shaking their head. And I'm like, that's crazy, right? Drama 101. I go, that's crazy. Well, sure enough, I had worked on my memories and my lines. I put it under, I said, this is, I'm going to put it under my pillow. I put it under my pillow. Sure enough, the next morning I got up, I remembered everything that I worked on the night before. That's funny. That's great. I love it. It's, here's um, what it is. It's just about your conscious. Right. You know, you're, it's just about what you've been working on. Don't you guys go home? I can't fall asleep after chorus rehearsal and I'm not even singing. Are the songs going through your head like crazy, crazy, crazy? So see, that's what we're missing. We don't have that right now. It's not as much. And I think that's part about our brain on music is that it was feeding us and feeding us and feeding us. We're going to have to find these other ways, again, setting goals, working on our own to try and make that work for us. Uh, I want to encourage my quartet members to practice. I'm going to share some of these ideas. I will set achievable goals for us before our upcoming rehearsal. And then somebody had asked about, um, do you have a particular website for music theory for learners? Some go too fast for my learners. Now, somebody put down here, musictheory.net might. Yes, but also there's a, you know, just like there is like a golf for dummies, tennis for dummies, there is actually a music theory for dummy book. Okay. However, uh, let me say this, the DCP program, you don't have to be a part of it. If you have anybody that's been through it, the theory part chapter or module of that book is fantastic. Joni Beskos, uh, God rest her soul. And then uh, I believe it was her and it wasn't Rini. Rini, that was the show stuff, but it was somebody else that did the music, uh, the, that category, uh, that module for the DCP program. It is so, so, so easy to follow. Good. Music theory is not easy. So I'm going to just tell you that right now. It's not. However, it'd be great if you knew a few things. If you knew the key signatures, if you know the rhythms, okay, if you can read a staff, a basic staff, treble and, and ba bass clef, but just basic things like that. And I'm telling you that particular module of the DCP, see if you can find somebody that's passed because. That is a great program, and um, and it, that that particular module is very easy to follow. But the music theory, the black and yellow books, you know, the dummy, for dummies, whatever it is, the music theory for dummies is great. And also BHS, the, the Barbershop Harmony Society, has a wonderful book that actually I purchased online. Uh, where is it? For one of my new members who wants to be an assistant director. Anyway, it's uh, they actually have a book, uh, mu basic music theory, on the Barbershop Harney Society's marketplace. So, and it's a little thin book, but it's great for music theory. Um, Carol shared some things we're doing to stay connected. We have an email newsletter two times a month with rehearsal summaries, fun news, etc. Phone calls from the leadership team, keeping Zoom into live rehearsals to um, accommodate various needs and social Zoom outside of rehearsal. So, you know, anything we can do is good. And then um, Jeffy had a question. Was it difficult for members to sing to section leaders on Zoom? Was it required? Not sure some members have that confidence, willingness, or um, it's in their comfort zone. Absolutely. Nothing is ever, ever mandatory, ladies, ever. You know, we, we, this is a, this is still a hobby. I know it doesn't feel like that sometimes. <laughs> like we're all sitting here on a Saturday doing this, but the, the key is to provide a, uh, a safe environment. So what I did was I made the groups very small. Of course, I'm fortunate. I have a lot of section leaders. I have, you know, four or five per section. I have no choice. I have to. So what I did was I divided up the 30 or so bases into like groups of four or five 
with a section leader. And that little group, the first few times we got together, they didn't know what we were doing. I said, just get together and talk. Just get together, your little group, talk a little bit, talk about how you're feeling, talk about what's going on, talk about the music, anything that they're worried about, whatever. The next rehearsal, okay, I had the section leader, leader sing in that little pod with their track and asked if anybody else would be willing to. And the first week, some, some sections, baritone section, <laughs> everybody sang without question. You know, we didn't even have to think about it. Bass section was really good too, actually. Most of them sang. And then the next week I'm like, well, see if people, so every week it got to be a little bit more safe. Every week it became a little bit more fun. Okay, let's see who got measures 35 to 92 or whatever it is, you know. So it actually ended up being, becoming again, a social thing, well, educational thing but also something that we could monitor and hear how people were doing. That's it for right now. Anybody else have anything? Write it in there or shout it out. Anybody, any thoughts on practicing? Has anybody done anything different than what I've talked about? Has anybody really not been practicing at all? You can admit it. Turn and go to your, I mean, and it's been really hard for you. We can talk about that. It's called music therapy. I think I think it's just important that we recognize vocal warm up videos on lead each day. Oh, yeah, Kathleen Hansen has fabulous ones that are out there. If you want to, she does also, and Kim Kim yes. Vaughn does too as well. My uh, class my class this morning was actually recorded on Region 15's uh, Vocal Fest too, so you can just go grab that there if you need to. It's recorded. It will be recorded for us also. Okay. Yeah, we have that. Um, when we were totally zooming, we whoops, it keeps moving. Drives me crazy. We included some musical games that made it easier to sing. Also, did mystery singers um, using Sing Baby Sing warm ups. Those are great guys. If you don't know about them, they're wonderful. Fantastic. Do you have any tips on learning a song that you don't like <laughs> or aren't jiving with? Lacking motivation because of this. Okay, so it, you're not going to ever like every song that is picked for your chorus. And I'm going to be very honest because that's who I am. It's not about you. <laughs> it's about your chorus. And whatever's been chosen, you have to sing it. And while it's hard to learn it, you know, if we don't like it, it's really how I feel. I mean, it's not about you as a person. It's about, about your ensemble and about your, your chorus. And if you're a music leader, your director should be talking to the musical leadership about some of the songs that are being introduced. And if you're a musical leader, you should say, your, share your feelings if you think it's not going to be something that you don't think the chorus is going to like. But if I have a musical leader that says, I don't really like that song, I look at it and I go, how do you, you don't like it. What about everybody else? And if it's just her, then I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I really don't mean to be sarcastic or come across as a, you know, bad person, but there's just some things, ladies, I have 98 women in my course. I can't even think about that. I have to think about what is entertaining to our audiences, what fits best for the vocal skills of my chorus. And what I, and what I do believe is I think most of the songs I have picked are fun and they've really had a fun time, except that the songs that I know, the one song over 15 years, I know they didn't like, they didn't learn it really well. So I just dropped it. I go, you guys really don't sing this well, I'm done. And then the other thing was, a song that um, we tried and we just really didn't sing it very well and it had nothing to do that they didn't like it or anything. It, for whatever reason, it must have been the vocal range of the song. It must have been the, I don't know. I have no idea what it was, but it was just so funny because we were singing for a coach, all these back to back up tunes. What do you think? And, um, you know, um, I see that question. Hang on one second. Um, that 
we sang that song and it was horrible in comparison to the other up tunes. So I don't know, we all have that, right? But it's as a performer, when I'm cast in a role or when I've been asked to sing a song on stage or when I, I was asked to sing at a wedding or it's asked to sing whatever, and maybe I didn't, there are a lot of songs I didn't like, but I didn't do it for me. I did it for the audience and I did it for whoever asked me to do it. So there are, I think, I think there are, that's- really There are a couple of questions, just some comments also. It's important to record yourself against the chorus. Are you really achieving the plan? Very true. Absolutely. So, and for both home and work, hard to rehearse without um, annoying the neighbors. I used to work late and sing in the office. And somebody said, sing into linen or clothing closet. It absorbs a lot of the volume, which was very interesting. And a question for you, how many of your 98 course members zoom into weekly rehearsal on average? Uh, I, I don't know, probably 70s, 80, something like that. Yeah, um, I would say that most courses, uh, because I'm a faculty member in Region 15, in talking to the directors, most courses across the country and other directors that I've spoken with and coaches I've spoken with, it's about 50%. So I found it very fascinating that I was, and I felt very blessed that I had about, you know, 75, 80% every week. So I was happy about that. And it wasn't that, and we recorded it so they, you know, so they could watch it. Some of it had to do ladies with like a young mother, her kids were home from school. They were there all day on Zoom and she had to monitor. Now she's got to put them all to bed and she has to be in the house singing with her chorus members and doesn't really have a place like the person who says she's singing in an apartment or whatever. Um, a suggestion that was made to some people, somebody said they went out in their car, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. And when the weather was nice, somebody went out on their deck. Somebody just sat outside. Um, some people went into their office, actually stayed at, at their office. Some people went to the friend's house that, you know, you have a friend that maybe you could go in their basement or whatever, not have to be with them and, you know, spend time with them and worry about the virus. But um, there's been all kinds of suggestions from people, but I think doing nothing is not the answer. Let's try to find something, right? Something. And that covers all the things that are here right now. Okay. They're all, they're just, they're just taking it all in, Katie, and going, okay, now what should I do when I get done today? I probably should work on the first 12 measures of my new piece of music. I'm pretty yes. sure what everybody is thinking. Yeah, pretty sure. That, you know what, that, I, I hope so. You know, I hope so. I hope that, you know, when we, I just feel like people are thinking they're going to be overwhelmed, like they have to do everything, the whole song, the, you know, three songs, five songs, just take pieces of it and see how you're doing. I mean, again, achievable, realistic, measurable, you know, so that becomes more consistent. Consistency is the key to being a good singer to begin with, right? A good performer to begin with. Taking your, making sure your vocal production is correct, being consistent with your vocal production, and then all of those other things, practicing in the mirror. I don't, you know, some of us don't need to do that as performers. Some of us just, not a big deal. But the majority of us, majority of Sweet Adelines really need to work at it. They're not used to that. And, and so we have to, again, provide a safe environment. I said, come on, come play in the sandbox with me, you know, but, um, but I think that when we provide an environment of support and we provide an environment of fun and excitement, uh, that people will do more and more every single time. And I always say this too, like my Saturday night retreat people who are people who are like engineers, doctors, CPAs, who have a really hard time on the risers, Saturday night at retreat, they don't seem to be that way at all. I go, and who are you? Have I met you? Let's have some fun. That's what we're talking about, the, the new category, right? Authenticity. I said, finally, Sweet Adelines has decided, I hope I don't insult anybody here, but 
that yes, it should be theater. It should be like that. It shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be what, it, what it's been. You know, that's what Rini, growing up my whole life, always wanted. That's why her and Joni Beskos came up with the show, with the category or the show package at International, so that it wasn't just about two songs, that it was about a performance and getting people to perform better in their choruses. Okay, and that's yeah. so important, so important. I just saw somebody. Yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl just wrote, yes, lots of things going through my head. Of course, Cheryl, there would be. Great ideas to build from, it's okay, I can say that to her. Great ideas to build from, take these ideas and make them work for your members and chorus. And, right. and we, all, we all, I would think, would understand that everything that you get in any class may not be appropriate for your members, but you might be able to tweak it, twist it, bend it, do something that will make it work for your chorus, so. Right, That's, there's no doubt. I mean, I when I started directing my course, I had 23 members. So I do know what it's like to direct a small chorus. I do know what it's like to direct a mid-sized chorus. And I do know what's, now it's what it's like to, to direct a large chorus. So I do know that small choruses, what did that, you know, how more difficult that would have been. But I wouldn't have changed what I'm doing now. I wouldn't have changed a thing. And here's why. Because my chorus deserved to have their rehearsal every week. They had, they deserve to have something to come to every week. And so I worked very hard as many, many other directors did to make sure that that was the case. And so I think that's why we had so many come. I also had a lot of more people in the course involved in helping to run the rehearsals and to have fun. I don't know what that last thing is. Um, the framework that Katie has been talking about, um, oh, it's called SMART Goals. Reach out if you'd like help figuring out how to set those up for your members, of course. Um, and I don't know who actually sent that. Oh, region one. Okay. So from, yeah. And That's me. I did that. We use that a lot at work, um, helping coach um, graduate students who are also adult learners how to set goals for themselves. So if yes. you are interested, you know, most of you know me, I'm Kate Roberts. Send me an email. I'll be happy to help you figure out how to apply that for your group of people. So yeah, I mean, there's so many there's so many philosophies that come from the business world that come from edu the educational world that we can apply to our singing world you know there's so many things that we can do to make that happen and i think that we have different learn styles of learning we know that so that's also why zoom might have been tough too so our kinesthetic learners were really really not happy you know visual it's okay right but we have to be very conscientious about all of that. And then we have to, like you said, give ideas. And I love that you guys already have something set up very much like this. And it's, um, you just have to want to do it and you have to apply it, right? And that's so hard. Right. That's the hardest thing, right? Is to do all of that. It is. Any other questions for Katie before we let her go have some lunch? Um, we just, they just put the um, link up. Please give your feedback. And again, I'll say it in this class too. I, and I'm not sure that I said anything different or anything that you didn't realize, but I think that it was a well-deserved class to have. It was one that Karen picked off of my list. So um, please, if you have any other questions, something comes up into your brain, my email address, Karen has all of that information. I'm happy to always talk to people. And so please, 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 if you, something comes to mind, or you're a leader and you want to try something, you say, do you think I'm crazy to do this? Just let me know. Because okay. I have my mentors too. So thank you. Hey, Katie, this has been great. Thank you so much for these classes that you made for us, that you tailored to us. I really, really appreciate it. I think the region does too. And so I'd like to thank you very much. It was great to see you uh, in, in on TV, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, on TV. Yeah, we only got to talk through, through this, right? Yep. 